Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna's Senior Transition Support, helping you navigate home care and senior residences. And good afternoon. Welcome to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Matt Delvecchio, specializing in home care, downsizing in the senior living industry. Thank you for tuning in on a chilly weekend with that wind. However, it is sunny. You know, I was thinking back just a month ago, I was in studio at this exact same time. And it was dark outside, and uh, I looked at the sunset for today. It's now 4.46 p.m. The sun is setting. We've gained a half an hour just in one month. So a little encouraging. Um, So hang in there, dress warmly, and I hope you enjoy the show. And a full show we have today. Coming right up, are you part of the sandwich generation? You know, you have your own family with kids, you're working hard, and you're also concerned about your parents. Well, adult children aren't always in sync with their aging parents. We're going to be addressing some of the hot topics concerning the sandwich generation and their folks. And on the second half, I'm going to be talking to the executive director of the Welcome Collective. It's an incredible organization which helps refugees settle and integrate into their new communities. And we're going to wrap it up with the mayor of Westmount, who recently wrote a powerful opinion piece in the Gazette supporting teachers and healthcare workers. Well, thank you for tuning in to Life Unrehearsed. I wanted to remind everyone that this coming Friday, January 26th, it's Bell Let's Talk Day, which brings awareness to mental health issues and the many organizations supporting those with mental health challenges. You know, it's estimated that one in two people struggling with mental health still aren't getting the help that they need. So try to support the cause, not just on the 26th, but really year round. Now, talking about mental health, there are many adult children that are just keeping their heads above water they are known as the sandwich generation trying to take care of their children while also navigating the life challenges that come along with aging parents so let's face it getting old is not easy some say that the most courageous demographic out there are indeed seniors and sometimes the parents and their children don't always see eye to eye. Well, my next guest specializes in trying to bridge that gap. I'd like to in- introduce you to my guest, Janice Goldmintz. Janice is the founder of Talk About Aging, and she helps adult children and their aging parents get in sync at any age and at any stage. Her master's degree in gerontology has given her wide insight into what can be done to assist our seniors in creating the highest quality of life possible, no matter what the challenges may be. As a child of aging parents, she she has had to sift through a myriad of options, changes, and emotional situation. And Janice provides a way to navigate the overwhelmed, whether from medical issues, family dynamics, or work-life issues. Well, Janice, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. It's nice to be here, Matt. How are you today? Doing very well. Thank you for doing this. Really an important topic and uh, affecting many people, multi-generational. Now, you have a master's degree in gerontology. However, your real degree comes from your life experiences. Tell us a little bit about your own story, Janice. So I have two parents that each had um, Alzheimer's disease at different times. My mother also had emphysema. So there were a lot of health challenges that needed to be navigated. And because I was the one with the background in aging, everybody looked to me for the answers as to what to do. And from the academic side, of course, I had some knowledge of what to do, but being part of the situation, uh, I'm still a child of these parents, and I got caught in that kind of emotional turmoil of what do I do best for my parents, how do I get them on the same side, how do I get other family members onto the same side, and you know how to deal with health professionals and others to create the best possible life. And as much as I knew intellectually, being emotionally involved made it even more challenging. Sure. And I think you are the prototypical sandwich generation as well with your own uh, life challenges with children as well, correct? And grandchildren. Oh, there you go. (laughs) Yes. So multi-generational. Now, uh, Janice, you are based in Toronto, and you and I live in similar worlds, assisting families and their loved ones, uh, navigating life transitions, really. And they are similar issues no matter where you live. And one of the most challenging times, I find, um, is trying to decide whether you should stay in your existing home or your apartment or your condo, or has it reached a point where you should consider a more appropriate living environment? And these are tough conversations 
conversations. Um, you do want to stay where you've grown up and, and raised your children. Maybe your children are now having different points of view. So I'd like to just discuss this particular one and what's important to know when deciding which might be best, whether to stay or to go. So when I'm having this discussion with people, there's about four or five different areas that I suggest people look at. And one of the most important is the health status of the, the older adults. You know, how healthy are they? Are they facing challenges? And if not today, what would happen if a sudden health challenge appeared? Would they be prepared? Would they know what to do? Um, beside that, we would need to look at things like their mobility. Even if they don't have a lot of health challenges, it could be that uh, getting navigating stairs or if there's um, a driveway that might get icy in the winter, you know, is this the best location of where I should be living? And how easy is it to, to get from point A to point B? If you have a garage that you need to get into, can you get into the house? All of those things. Uh, finances is very important. You know, what kind of money do you have if you needed health care uh, assistance, if it was either bringing in renovations to your home to make it easier to navigate or to have home health care come in if you had some of those health challenges? Um, I also think that the supports around you are important. If you're very connected to your, your community in terms of where your bank is, where your hairdresser is, um, your dentist, whatever, and it's very easy for you to navigate some of those places, then that can be great for you to stay where you are because it's easy for you to access those things that are familiar. However, if those things aren't around you and you already have to travel, so how does that figure in to what might happen to you in the future? Or would you be able to get to these places if there were health challenges? And then finally, social constructs. Are you going out with friends that are close to you? Do you have programs that you like to go to, you know, cultural activities? And again, if it's in your, your close vicinity, you might want to keep that um, in mind when you're deciding where it is you should live. So, and also your family is going to tell you what they think you should do. So all of those things are going to factor into it. This is Life on Rehearse. Matt Del Vecchio here, and I'm talking with Janice Goldman, founder of Talk About Aging, some of the challenges that the Samus generation are facing in these tough discussions with uh, their parents. Um, you know, what I guess, Janice, it is so difficult for, for especially a mom or a dad, and, and you're in that family home or in a condo where you've, you just don't want to move. It becomes a bit of a challenge to have those conversations because I'm sure the adult children are thinking a little bit differently. They're, they obviously care for mom or dad. They want a safer environment if necessary. Or how can they just support mom or dad in their existing environment? So who can help you make some of these decisions to carry out any changes that are involved? So my suggestion is to start off having the conversation within your family because that's, that's going to be probably the most important group of people who are going to make the decisions. But sometimes having an, un, uh, an uninvolved third party in various ways can give you the most objective ideas and can turn down the, the emotional volume. So when it comes to things like finances and you're thinking, well, where is the money going to come to finance something like a retirement residence or long-term care, um, starting off with real estate, if you own a, a home or a condo, can give you a really good idea of what the value is of your current property. And then you can figure out, okay, if I sell for current market uh, value, how long is that going to sustain me? And that's an important thing. Um, also, financial advisors. So if you are regularly dealing with a banker or you have investments, again, going and seeing those people and saying, you know, I'm thinking of moving and this is the cost potentially of moving somewhere else. Do I have investments or um, financial wherewithal to do this on a long-term basis? And that's going to help you to decide. Um, health professionals, if there are health challenges, can be very helpful because they can tell you if you have those mobility issues, well, you need to be somewhere where it's on one level or you're going to need somewhere possibly that you can put 
you know, a hospital bed into or some other um, equipment that might be necessary for you to, to navigate your home. So these are all really important people. Very important. And then I, I, if you've sorry. made the, decide, uh, the decision to move, who can help you do that? So then, again, there's people like downsizers, or if you need to um, get rid of things, there are people who will do sales for you uh, to help you with that estate sales. So there's lots and lots of people that can be involved in that decision-making process. Interesting enough, one of our guests coming up later on the show is helping refugees uh, with furniture, getting them established, right. and there's that real tie-in. Janice, we have to head out to traffic. You are really good in, in bridging that gap with those conversations between adult children, the Samus generation, and their parents. We're going to switch gears a little bit when we come back, but we're going to talk about the doctor patient relationship. It's very difficult even to have a doctor, but even when you're in front of the doctor, it happens so quick. We want to ask how you can make that relationship better. And we're also going to discuss the amount of meds that some people are taking. It's supposed to make you better and healthier. Are we actually making it worse for our parents? So we want to address that as well. Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. Matt Del Vecchio here. Mixing in a little country music, reminding you to kiss your loved ones while you can. I am talking with Janice Goldmintz about uh, the sandwich generation, some of the challenges that uh, they have with that discussion with aging parents. And um, she is the founder of Talk About Aging. Janice, we have so much to cover here. We're going to try to fly through some important topics, one of them being the importance of the patient-doctor relationship. Uh, first of all, if you're lucky to have a doctor, great. But now, when you're with the doctor, it seems to happen so quick. So I'd like to start off first, what gets in the way of a good doctor-patient relationship? So I think there's biases on both sides. Um, older patients tend to have that white coat syndrome. Whatever the doctor says is right, and they know, and I can't ask questions, and they have only a short period of time to spend with me, so I can't you know, detain them, uh, even though I may not understand fully what's being said to me. And on the other side, you have the doctors who think, well, they're not listening to me anyway. I've only got five minutes, and they've got 20 things that they want to discuss. And the minute I've got my foot out the door, oh, but, but, but this, 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 this. So my idea really is to find a way to have a partnership with your physician. I think that's the best way to go. Yeah, I think that's so important. And because, you know, I understand from the physician's perspective, uh, they're just flying through patients, but it's important that uh, you maintain that relationship and make it as effective as possible. And you've got some really good ideas as to what we can do um, when you're with the doctor and preparing for a doctor's visit. So I think preparation is really the key. And if you can tell your doctor why you're there, what you have tried, what has worked, what has not worked, uh, that's going to help them too because within around 30 seconds, you're giving them a really good bird's eye view of why you're there. The other thing is to have only three possible things that you're discussing at the maximum so that you've got time to delve into some of those things that might be important to you. And once the doctor has seen you and done their exam and they have information for you, if you can write it down so that you don't forget those key points that might be important, like the kind of, uh, you know, the drugs you may be taking, how you should take them, what to look out for, all of those things, that can be helpful. Having another person go with you if necessary to get that down for you is perfectly fine. But, again, you want the doctor to be talking to you as the patient. So that's, you want that relationship really to be fostered unless, you don't, you know, unless the person doesn't have the cognitive ability. And then for sure you want to have another person in there with them. Um, also be prepared with things like their medications that, you're, that they're taking. Things even like over-the-counter meds are really important. Symptoms, all of those things that could have um, an influence on what you're there to see the doctor for. And I love the idea about writing down, when preparing, you know, as you're heading in there, make sure you write it down in paper because all of a sudden you're with the doctor and it happens so quick. Nice to have something written down. And I love the fact that you're saying 
post-appointment, write down what you've heard. So often it happens, especially in winter, right. and, and you're with mom or dad, and you're putting on the jacket, and there may be, let's say, a cane or a walker, or there may, might be mobility issues, and you're trying to get in the car. And before you know it, you're in your car driving home, and you're thinking, okay, what did he say or what did she say? And always best just to take a minute or two to write down some of those important things. So I love that. Now, uh, Janice, I want to... Um, Switch it up a little bit. Uh, you are a big proponent about pharma and the amount of meds that um, older adults are taking, and you're challenging that, and I think rightly so. So how can drugs affect our health? So what happens sometimes is that the drugs are worse than the disease at times, the side effects of the drugs. And if physicians or health professionals are not aware of what those might be for you, then it's hard for them to help you. The other thing is that you may be going to your cardiologist and you may be going to a respirologist and somebody else for arthritis, and each of them is giving you a different prescription, but they're not aware of what the other doctor has given you or what those interactions are. So it's very important to go to one drugstore because if you're going to the drugstore closest to each doctor and you're not having it in one place, the pharmacist can't oversee all of your drugs. And that's a really important thing is to have a pharmacist that can go, oh, this drug will interact with this one or watch out for that side effect. And, you know, you may want to talk to your doctor about that because, you know, I'm seeing that there's a challenge. The other thing that I think is really important if you can do it I know in Ontario, you can literally take all of your drugs to your pharmacist and have them do an analysis. And they'll tell you, yep, this works with this, this doesn't work with that. And also to do a review with your physician every so often to say, these are all the drugs I'm on. Do I still need them? Is the dosage correct? You know, what should I be looking out for? Because what happens is there are certain drugs that will make somebody constipated. So then, all right, now I'm going to give you this constipation drug, which has another side effect. And then you're on medications because of the side effects of the other drugs. So having that review and being um, open with your health professional and having your pharmacist there at your side is going to give you, you know, peace of mind that everything is good in terms of the medications you're on. Really glad you brought that up, Janice, because it's so important. As we age, you just tend to get more and more uh, pharmaceuticals involved, more medicine. Next thing you know, you've got not just two or three, you're up to five, six. I've seen some 12, 14 uh, at a right. time, and it just gets out of hand. So the role of the pharmacist is really increasing. We've had a, a few pharmacists on Life Unrehearsed, and they could play a major role, and I agree with you, get that reviewed with your physician as well yeah, periodically every six months or a year um, because over medication is becoming a serious issue here I think in the country we have to wrap it up uh, Janice but I want to thank you very very much in in a, a couple of words very quickly to our sandwich generation out there what's the number one recommendation you can give to the sandwich generation you know really cherish that time because, yes, it may be challenging, but you are going to get so much out of it, so much benefit, you know, spending that time with, with the full generational spectrum. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, the great-grandchildren and the grandchildren interacting with the grandparents and the great-grandparents. There's memories there. There's legacy there. There's so much great sharing and fun and memories. No matter what stage those people are at, there's always value in life, and to just hold on to that in those moments where it can be very challenging to remember that as much as there's challenge, mm -hmm. there's some there's some really great aspects and, to and it as well. Cherish it while you can. Great words of advice, Janice. All right, well, thank you very much for coming in here uh, and, and discussing this uh, important issue about Sam's generation and their, and their aging parents. How could people get a hold of you, Janice? So the easiest way is you can either go on my website, which is talkaboutaging.com, and my contact information is there. Mm -hmm. um, you can call me. I'm always accessible. I'll give you my phone number if you write it down. It's 647-780-2258. Right. And if you don't remember that, you can go on my website, or you can always email me at Janice at Talk about aging. All right. Talk about aging.com, probably the best way on the website. All yep. your contact info is there. Thanks so much, Janice. Thank you so much.